Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back here at Mark's Aquatics. Right, I thought I'd do a part two on these little white cloud mountain minnows that we've been breeding. Now we've had a few out, not as many as I'd hoped for. Um, they looked like there was a lot of breeding action going on in there when they were breeding. Obviously they were in the amongst of Java moss spawning away, but they're not mass spawners like Zebra Tan, uh, Danios. They're, um, they don't lay that many eggs on each spawn, you know, only only a few each time they go in there, so uh, they're not huge spawners, like killifish, they'll go in, in amongst those spawning mops, a lot of activity going on, but then not a lot of eggs are being produced during that activity, so that is what we've got out there, we've got about 15, I think, 15 or 16 little babies out there, which is plenty enough for this little tank, and to show you guys how we bring them on, now these are super small, very, very, very tiny, and they're going to need that micro culture, that infusoria culture that I've been teaching you guys how to make on the um, on the Neon Tetra breeding video and on the Zebra Danio breeding video as well. It's the first food that I always like to produce. If you're unfamiliar with the way I make the infusoria culture, I'll show you another one in a minute and show you how it's going on, show you the infusoria in the actual pot itself. And as I've said before, the infusoria is not one specific type of organism. It's Lots and lots of different types of micro life which are living in amongst it, and it's just as a collective group they call it infusoria. So it's lots of little tiny little bits of water life which grow and feed on that decaying plant matter in the uh, in the pot. And we'll show you that. I'll show you that in a minute. But as you can see, these guys are really really tiny. They got lovely little blue eyes. You can see that little tiny gas, that little gas bubble, that little air bubble inside their bellies, which makes them look like little mirrors at this age which is that little swim bladder and when they're first born you'll notice a lot of these species they'll shoot up to the surface to grab their first gulp of air and that will inflate that little swim bladder that'll get them buoyant and that's why with quite a few species of fish you've got to have low water especially with things like koi and um, species along that nature that's why you'll always see the fish going up into the margins and they'll lay their eggs very very close because as soon as those eggs hatch those little fry will shoot to the surface and grab their first little gulp of air which then inflates that little bladder and gives them control in the water like you can see these guys have got now. Beautiful little blue flash in these as well in some of them as they pass under this little light. If you um, if you want to know what light I'm using here, I don't know if you saw my IKEA video, but they sell these down in IKEA and they're um, amazing little lights specifically made, I'll try not to dazzle you guys, but it's got white LEDs and red LEDs in there. Now they they make this for their little hydroponic growing systems that they uh, that they sell. And I found them to be super cheap little LED lights for growing plants. And as you can see in the top there we've got dwarf water lettuce, we've got some sage rickia which I've put in there to act as filtration and also it'll have its own little its own little um, I'll just refocus you up there. It's got its own little um, infusoria culture on that as well, which will happily breed on the uh, little bits of decaying leaves and things in amongst it. Obviously the java, sorry, the sage plant that you can see here should be in the ground, but it floats well and it will grow, as you've seen in the bench tank, trailing away along the surface there on these little runners that it puts out every sort of four inches. It'll put a new one out and they keep rooting around the bottom of your tank and then rerouting themselves again. So that's a good little thing to put in into a tank as a floating plant. Ricky is good as well because that floats. If you want to grow that submerged, you've got to lash that and tie that to a little piece of um, bit of driftwood, a uh, bit of bogwood, something along those lines, and it will slowly grow around the uh, around the thread that you tie it on with and bush out and look really really nice. It doesn't like strong light. These are perfect. These you can have them. I've got this on top of the tank. As you can see there, it's just perched on the top spread across the top there which is fine for these I've only got it there now I raise it up quite a bit but I put it there just so you've got a little bit more a bit more viewing light so you can see these little guys swimming around but they're doing really really well I'm really happy with their progress so far we haven't lost any the infusoria cultures have been readily taken I'll just grab my uh, little turkey baster now and I'll just drop a little bit in 
I'll try and be careful with this culture so I don't stir it up too much so you guys can see it in a moment. But I'll just see, you'll see it going in as like a little white cloud there, just in line with the heater. Just see it dropping down through the water column now, and you should see them skipping in amongst that in a minute and congregating around this little area there now. Now these are super tiny. Let me see how close I can get you to them without it going out of focus. But you can see those tiny little white dots in the water there. Now that's the infusoria. Hopefully that's clear enough for you. I know they don't look super clear because the camera wants to focus on everything else apart from these little moving objects. So, But you can see them in the water column and if you try and follow one fry, you might see it grab one and take it in. But you won't beat this as a first food. You can use liquid fried foods. Um, you know I use the water worms as well. They're nearly at water worm stage now. These are a few days old. They were so tiny when they first came out. I've waited a few days until I started filming them for you. So, um, so you could see them a little bit easier. Some of you guys are saying about why do I keep snails in the uh, in the tanks? Well, for one reason, there's lots of algae in the tanks that start to grow because they're new little systems with cycled filters. You do tend to get quite a bit on the glass, as you can see this side, and they'll quite happily munch away on that. And they don't do them any harm. Nor do they do them any harm in the fry tank when they're sorry in the fry tanks when, when in the breeding tank itself when you put the uh, the pair in. Someone says, "Do they eat the eggs?" Now I don't know. I'm not sure if they do eat the eggs. I've never seen them eat the eggs. I always see them on the glass. Um, but it's possible they could eat the eggs. I'm not saying that they don't, but I've never had any trouble with them doing so and losing them all. And I've always had good hatch rates, as you know, on most of my breeding videos, apart from obviously this one. Um, where there wasn't any snails in that tank, I don't think. I moved them to a smaller tank. I had them in the in my 20 gallon tank where I spawned them because they need a bigger tank to spawn in. And I put them now into this little um, into a little three gallon tank, three and a half gallon tank I think this one is, with a little tiny sponge filter as you can see this side here. Now if you've got a double sponge filter, okay, and you want to get away and you want to get two tanks on the go if you get your sponge filter now this is the other half obviously it's a t-piece so you'd have that you'd have your central air airlift and then your other sponge filter would be here okay up this way so if you take that all apart reverse it up that way it's blocked off on the bottom as you can see there what I tend to do is super glue a couple of suckers one on there and one on there. I only did one on the one in this tank, as you can see. Is it's you can see just see the sucker there, but I only put one on. You can put two, and then just literally stick that against the side of your aquarium. Would be inside like that. Okay. Get your airline. Poke your airline through there, and then right down to the bottom, and then that will act as a single airflow lift filter. And you can have a single. So if you've got a cycled filter. You can strip it down and you can have one one of these in each tank and that will be perfect to filter out a, fly, a fry tank. And then obviously the air is rushing up that pipe then which is drawing that water through that sponge and then it will be gurgling away and coming out there. As you can see on a very very slow bubble coming out there and that will filter that water beautifully and keep that nice and clean. Obviously you've got to do your regular water changes and everything else to keep these guys good. These are going to grow quite quickly because there's not that many in the tank, so they've got a nice lot of tank space. They've got clean water and they're going to be growing nice and quick. Some of the ones that I've had here, like the Zebra Danios next door, as you can see now, they've put on a lot of weight like you saw in the last video. They're fully striped up now. They're just baby versions of the adults now. They're fully coloured up, lovely. As are my little king tigers down there, as you can see on the bottom, they're doing super well and all, which is nice. So they're all doing good. I've got the workshop lights turned off at the moment because of your view, for you, for you viewers, because uh, it does 
tend to get a little bit glary in here, reflections from my window from the koi pond. And if I keep moving around in the background there, you can see me. Hello. You can see my reflection there in the door. So I tend to stand over it with my t-shirt on and that blocks some of the light out. So you guys can see. But these little fellas are doing really well. Really happy with them. All the little snails are whizzing around. They're going to be on water worms soon. Probably big enough to eat them now. In fact, I'll just sprinkle a few in. And I'll just see if they um, if they have a go at them. Everywhere, everything in here is dual water change today. So I haven't got to worry too much about adding a little bit extra food. And um, with this being live food, you'll see them start floating down in a second. Um, with this being live food, it will survive in the... Um, in the aquarium for quite some time because um, obviously it's living in a liquid they live in a liquid inside anyway these water worms as you can see in there now that's getting quite vinegary now that really that yeast has broken that water worm culture down and it's got quite I'll try not to tip it all over the place um, but you can see them up here and that's all you do is you run your little paintbrush round just like that wipe them off, dip them in the tank and then down they go and they may probably, they'll probably take a few of the smaller ones out I don't know if you can see any there attacking any of them but those water worms are tiny and they can see how, how big the fry are compared to them now so it'll give you an idea how small these fry are Now one thing I will say guys, if you've got your main aquarium and you fancy giving these breeding projects a go, a good idea is to go and buy yourself a couple of these sponge, these sponge filters, these airlift filters, they're not very much and they're quite easy to make as well. You only need a load of sponge, if you can cut out a load of discs, you can cut discs out on a sponge like that and you can slide them one on top of the other, very easy to make and then all you need obviously is a bit of pipe like that, drill some holes in it block off one end if you don't want to buy them and you want to get creative which we like to do on Mark's Aquags as you know but these are very easy to make it doesn't matter if the pipe's got a that 90 degree bend on the top or you take that off and you just let the air rise straight out because it will do exactly the same thing I like to put the tops on because it angles the water across the surface and that way you get a nice slow little spiral of water going around there and you don't get any dead spots then and it keeps the water a lot more fresher than the than the air just go I mean the air coming up it will circulate slowly but it gives it a better a bit, bit more of a flow and with the mountain minnows they're used to streams and a little bit more flow so you can always give them a little bit of extra flow doing it this way putting that little piece that, that little 90 degree kicker on the top there from the original filters or you can make one quite easily as well now what I was saying with the filters if you get a double like this you've got a spare air pump or you can put a t-piece off of your main air pump that you're using in your tank to grab another line off just stick one of these inside your tank it might it may not look very sightly at first but if you're going to be breeding fish and you want to cycle your filters and you think right I'm going to do it in the next sort of month or the next few, you know couple of weeks or so you can either you can just put these in your tank and let them mature in your main tank until you're ready to use them and then once you've followed how I do it before without a filter and then you need the filter you've got one then ready to rock and roll and um, all you've got to do is just slide that off you can take it apart you can make two separate ones or if you've got a bigger tank single tank you can put that sponge filter then straight in afterwards give it water changes and then you're good to go and then you can keep up that filtration so make sure that you keep them um, a little filter to hand and it's always nice to have a little cycle filter on hand especially if you've got a sump unit under your tank um, you marine guys know more about sumps than than the freshwater guys I've, even though I've kept sumps with fresh water before it's another tank which is under your main tank which is all your filtration system in there you've got all your bio media in there biological media in there filtration in there and then it's returned via a pump back to your main aquarium via um, by a little tube going in so it's sucked out or it's gravity fed down into the sump and then pushed back up into the tank you can always put a couple of filters down in there as well and bring them on out of sight 
Um, so you've always got some, and if, when you're not using them, it's added filtration for your main tank anyway. So that's a good thing to think about before you start when, before you start breeding, because you've got to have obviously you've got to have things and places to put these things once they start to get to a certain size, because you can get inundated quite quickly. Now I'm lucky that I've got a big workshop here, vast array of tanks, and I can move things around um, and set up new little tanks. And when they get to a certain size then, I'll take them all up to my aquatic shop and um, and give them to them. And then they'll give me some credit for them. Some fish food or maybe a few other fish that I can start breeding more things for you. And, um, and that's what I tend to do. So you've got to be prepared for these things as well. And make sure you've got... Because you're bringing all these little things into the world. So you've got to make sure that you look after them to the best of your ability. Right guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the Infusoria culture, okay, and I'm going to show you some other microscopic little creatures, and we're going to put them in some water droplets so you can see them, and so you can see exactly, well hopefully, I'll show you, if I can get in close enough to them, what um, what you're feeding these little fry. We'll start off with the, um, with the Infusoria first, which is the smallest food that you're going to need for when you start breeding fish. Now, Infusoria is absolutely microscopic um, and it is a first food which I always feed to all the fish that I breed out, all the very, very small egg layers anyway. Any tiny little things need tiny little food. And so we're gonna have a look at those first. I'm gonna put some into some into a little droplet. Now, what I'm gonna do, I found that dwarf water lettuce holds um, water beautifully. It really does hold it in a nice little little orb like a little world and if you follow me on Instagram if you do want to follow me on Instagram just go to marks underscore aquatics you can follow me there I various I put up various little pictures now and again and stuff that you don't see on here of obviously in the workshop different things that I do different places that I go that kind of stuff which might be interesting to some of you guys so you can uh, go and follow me on Instagram on marks underscore aquatics you can follow me there as well um, and if you've noticed, if you do follow me on there, you'll notice that I put, I've photographed quite a bit of um, Infusoria and different cultures on these water plants because they hold such a perfect little bubble on the tiny little hairs which are on the leaves. Um, and I'll do that for you now. So when we go back, I'll set you up over the, over the top of this little tub I'm using with some water lettuce in, and we'll t have a look at these little tiny microcultures. Okay. Right, guys. There you go. Now, if you look on the I'm going to poke in my little paintbrush at the side. Oh. I think it might be a little bit too much. But my paintbrush, you can see how small these little guys are. So you can see there, I'll try and shade that a little bit with my hand. You can see the micro life, the infusoria whizzing around in there. Now what I'm going to try and do is get my angle, I'll angle my torch at the back of it. In fact, what I'm going to do is turn off the workshop light now and I'll put a torch on them and that may illuminate them for you a little bit better. I know you can see them now, but hopefully you'll see them a lot better in a second. There you go, that's a lot better view for you there. You can see those tiny little white dots. Now that's the Infusoria. For all you guys who haven't seen it before, that little micro life, those little micro cultures, whizzing around in that little tiny world. And that is what your baby fish are feeding on. You can see a bigger one in amongst there. Like they're like little worm creatures there buzzing around it, but there's they're more of the adults, but you can see the babies in amongst them as well. Now they multiply and they're billions in these cultures. So there's all sizes from the baby ones all the way up to the adults for them to feed on. So that is Infusora. Now I'll try and I'll zoom right in close. It may not get that. It might go a bit blurry. But it'll give you a rough idea then of what these little guys are. You can't see them with a naked eye, really. You can when they're more adult, but normally you can, they just look like 
of clouds moving around in your in your culture okay so there right we have infusoria so we got some of that I think you can probably still see them moving around there just zooming back out like that brilliant stuff so what I can do now is I'll just dip that under let that pop back off of there and now what I'll do is I'll make a little culture up and I'll show you the water worms right guys there you go I've just made up a little culture of water worms so you can see those and it's teeming with them in there so each time I put that paintbrush I literally dab the paintbrush on the side of the pot there put it into a little teaspoon with some water it may disappear down in there in a minute um, you can see now I'll just try and angle you a bit better there you go there is absolutely teeming with them in there and they make a great follow-on food for any of your tetras that you want to breed rainbow fish anything along those natures we've got a little bit of a swirl going on there in the top of my pot so it's tending to try and move away but that is what they are little water worms micro worms you get bigger worms obviously as you go up through the micro worms you get the the grindle worms all these other things different cultures you can buy them all off of eBay lots of aquarists have got them for sale um, and all they do is they'll just send you a little culture in a little bag and all you do is add it to the um, add it to the media whether it be porridge potato anything like that vinegar eels are the same they look very similar and um, little nematodes so they're they're not actually worms they're nematodes these guys so um, but they're a brilliant second secondary food for bringing up egg scattering fish and they go nuts for them and they put on they're high in protein and they'll put a lot of weight on your fry and keep them nice and healthy for you, okay? I love water lettuce. Look at the way that sticks to the top of those microscopic little hairs which makes it float in the water. Absolutely fantastic nature, is it? It really is. Right, I think what we'll do now is I'll make another little culture up and we'll put some brine shrimp, freshly hatched brine shrimp in that bubble for you to look at, okay? Right, there you go, guys. Some little brine shrimp you can see a couple of them have escaped <laughs> took me a couple of attempts actually to get that onto there and to balance properly but we got a little bead we got a little planet on there now planet artemia and um, as you can see they're very very busy little guys super active which gets those fry really keen and eager to chase them around and hunt them down and they're packed with protein as well and this is really a staple food now for any of your fry that you're bringing along. Obviously the egg scatterers need the infusoria, the microworm cultures first to, um, to start their little lives off and to give them a little kick start in life. But then you're moving on to these, whether you're breeding angel fish, anything else. Brilliant food and a staple food, whether it's cichlids, baby cichlids, anything like that. Brine shrimp's readily taken by most um, fish species. Um, but make sure obviously you wash the salt out from them first with a nice little Artemia sieve which you can buy readily on a lot of sites these days or down your local aquatic shop very very fine micron sieve so you can wash that salt briny water out of there before you add it to your tank that's very very important because if you start adding little bits of salt water with these guys in and think ah, it won't hurt we'll just put a little bit in you keep doing that over a week or two weeks salt doesn't leave your water you do water changes you dilute it slightly but it will stay in there salt will stay in your water column your salinity will go up in your tank that means it'll get saltier every time you put some in and then you'll make it obviously it won't be fresh water anymore it'll become brackish water and then your fish are going to suffer and die because of that so it's really really important that you wash all the artemia and all that salt out okay in a sieve just run them under tap water is fine and then just sit the you can sit the the sieve on a little bit of kitchen roll and let that water from the tap absorb into that and then you just wash it wash that little sieve around in your tank and they'll swim away and then the uh, the fry can feed on them then so there you go that's um, some little artemia as close as I can really get I could probably zoom it right in but I don't think the pitch is going to be too too stable but you can see them there with their little wings flying around like little birds fabulous stuff 
Look at that. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little video today. We've got a few little um, unhatched brine shrimp there, which I've just put in the rest of the brine shrimp now. And a couple of eggs have gone in there. That's those little white dots. But they'll get still sink to the bottom out of the way. You always get a couple of those in your tank. But I hope you enjoyed this little video today on the uh, on the update on the mountain minnows. Like I said, we haven't got loads and loads of them out, but it's enough to show you guys how to rear these little fry up and how I do it. And I hope you've learned something today, and I hope you've learned something on all my other videos as well. I've had loads of nice comments from you guys, which I really do appreciate. And um, and it's nice to hear a few of you are trying out my my breeding little projects and having some great success as well by the sounds of it. Quite a few of you have done the neons and uh, and you've got some fry out and um, zebra danios as well. Someone's got a load of fry out as well. And like I've always said, if you come prepared, you're going to win. And that's the way it is. You want to make sure you've got everything in hand first. Don't go at this half cock thinking, oh, well, I'll just go and breed this. Because if you haven't got these infusoria cultures like I keep saying, but it's so important. I hear people saying, oh, my fish, I had loads of fry, but they've all died. But they've been in the tank. But when they're trying to, eat, to compete, and, and they, they're going to be out-competed by the other fish, they're going to be predated on if you're in a tank. As soon as you set up a small tank like this, which is their little world, their little home, and nothing else in there that can predate on them, just give them the right foods that they need. Start off with these tiny little cultures and work your way up through the ranks to the bigger Artemia food. You're going to bring on some lovely healthy fry, regular water changes. I would do 10-20% twice a week in a fry tank. Keep that water nice and clean. Keep as much live food going in as you can. Keep away from these crushed flake foods and powdered foods because they will pollute the water up quicker. Your fish aren't going to grow as well. And obviously you're going to be stressing, the, uh, stressing them out. Disease can set in. You can end up with little white spot outbreaks or um, from when you know if you've bought fish from the from the shops especially and you haven't quarantined them first you may get problems along those lines if those little tomites are in the water which is baby white spot flying around in there and they'll latch onto these fish and before you know it you'll end up with a nice outbreak of that which you don't really want because that'll be upsetting for you so make sure everything's sterile make sure you sterilize your nets dip your nets in hot water boiling water Make sure, or some pot, uh, potassium permanganate, I use a mild solution of that to leave in a bucket and wash my nets out in that, because it's basically a bleach. You can use mild bleach as well, a mild bleach solution to clean your nets, but it's imperative, everything's kept really clean, especially you, your hands, if you're going into a tank, um, making sure your hands are clean, all that residue is washed off. I know a lot of guys will say, oh, I'll just wash my hands and I'm going to put it in the tank now, because it's clean, but then you've got lots of soap and things still left under your nails and different stuff like that and as soon as you put your hands in there it's probably worse off than it was before um, so always make sure you really rinse your hands off well before you go putting your hands in there use I use these JBL tongs which they gave me a while ago and um, they are absolutely fantastic from ProScape and if you can see that there there you go ProScape tongs from JBL, they're big long long tongs, now you can, I can reach right in there, look at that, right there down to the bottom, sorry guys, and um, I can do most of the work, if I need to return, you know, bring anything out or take anything that's died out or anything else, I can do it with the tongs, so I'm not putting my hands in the tank, and then you're not going to be polluting things up, anyway, I'm rambling on guys, I hope you enjoyed that little episode, I hope you've seen some nice things, and um, there's that old smelly culture there, look. And there's my other one. That's how I breed that. I just thought I'd show you there. Those are still in the briny water before I suck them out. You can see how many of those guys are in there. I'm off again. Look, I'm, ch I'm chatting again now. See, I'm getting back into it. You can see, you can see how many's in there. Um, from one little hatch and that's from my little DIY hatcher there which I made a while back you'll find they'll get stuck to the top just whiz it around on that and they'll go back in again 
but that's what they are that's the old artemia superfood for Froy and that's the old infusoria culture there as you can see it's starting to clear up but if I put my torch on the side I will end this video shortly guys I do promise but if I can put that in from the top can you see those tiny little clouds now if you keep an eye on those they're moving and that is millions upon millions of baby infusoria moving around and they will follow the light as well you see they're like little little clouds falling down there now that's the microscopic life which is growing on the surface it's falling you see it moves it's like a little entity moving all on its own creating different shapes and that's what you're looking for and the older they get they turn into the bigger white dots that you saw in the bubble earlier but it's this stage is where you want to time it which is about the fourth to fifth day when you start to see this see this dropping and you've got your fry out that's what you suck up and put in okay that's the important stuff so if I go that you stick your, your little let me try and get that for you get the old pet in there like that and suck those little chaps up and it's just like sucking smoke up and then we come to our little tank and you can see that smoky substance there which is all those little guys getting blown in there and those little fry will go bananas for that they really will that's if I stop hitting them on the head with tongs anyway guys at last I'm gonna finish this video off hope you enjoyed it hope you're learning stuff tune in on Sunday because we're going to be doing that 8,000 sub giveaway with that little tank which I promised at 8,000 subs and we're nearly at 9 and I completely forgot about it a couple of you guys hooked me up and said alright what about this 8,000 sub giveaway and I was like oh my goodness I forgot all about that I do apologise that's on Sunday's video where we'll be doing some hybridisation of two species so stay tuned for that one anyway guys hope you liked that video you're all stars love you loads and take care and I'll see you on the next episode of Moxquatics bye for now just me and my